G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie-David, founder and mortgage broker at Atelier Wealth, and I'm really proud to bring uh, each and every episode to you where we talk about investing in property, so tips, tricks, and insights. And one of our guests that always come in are what I call best in breed, and what that means is they live, eat, breathe, sleep, property investing. And our guest today is uh, no exception because you do all that and more. Welcome to the studio, Massey Archibald from Teach Me About Property. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. And thanks for having me on. Uh, mm. I'm really excited uh, to be here with you and uh, to be able to share some of our insights. Thanks, uh, man. And, and to just have a good conversation Absolutely. about property. It's an exciting time. Um, so let's get to it. Let's get into it. Yeah. Before we start, I want to kick off and Teach me about property or team up more affectionately team known up, yeah. uh, to the masses um, is is a business that you know you've started and and run in conjunction with your beautiful wife Paula as well. Uh, I, I want to say it's a bold statement, but I think it's a really um, authentic statement. Is that you want to help change a million lives, and we're doing that one property at a time, one family at a time. Family at a time. Yeah. So look, I'm I'm, I'm big on mm. leading through vision, and and the vision is to to change one million lives, one family at a time. That's the vision, but the vehicle is property. Yep. So you know we have a deep belief that that property, property ownership, property investing, yeah, is the mechanism for families to be able to change within a single generation. Spot on, spot on, right? Yeah, we're talking about intergenerational, intergenerational wealth, 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 but within one generation, you can yeah. turn around, you can extinguish the challenges that a lack of financial literacy have. You yeah. can, you can create opportunities for every other generation. Yeah. So in a single generation you create opportunities for every other generation thereafter mm. and property becomes the vehicle and the tool and through property is the tool you know you teach financial literacy you teach people how to you know shift um, you know their income from um, from just spending into assets yeah and, and and it's it's the change it's the change in their thinking yeah that we're so proud of and 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 at different key points the families will say back to us team apps changed my life is that incredible and when i hear you talk about this they're not clients, they're families. And I think oh, that's yeah. where you transcend. And I don't mean this um, in a disrespectful way, but people that are selling properties, for example, yeah. they're clients, they're transactions. Yours are family. And that's why it probably goes deeper into your core beliefs, into changing families. And then the outcome is property ownership. Yeah, the outcome is property ownership. And the reason why we talk with families is because, you know, we want to work with mum and dad yeah. and help them. To, for a lot of these families, you know, they're the first in their line to, to own property in Australia yeah. within their family group. Yeah. Um, and so they're, ba- they're breaking um, a, a lot of, you know, generational curses, curses where they don't understand property. They don't understand asset acquisition. And for many of them, they may even feel that property is, you know, out of their reach. Yeah. Right? And so what we do is, is we help them on the achievability scale. And so we help them to understand that profit, property is achievable. And by solving the achievability function, it's amazing the behaviours that flow from mm. families because they're like, wait a minute, that's all I have to do? It's self-belief. And, and, yeah. and, and I can build a pro- I, can, I can own one property and then I can build multiple mm. properties and, and those are the only things I need to do? Like, yeah, that's it. And if you do that, then Team Apple will change your life. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And you have a slightly unique skew on your client base as well because I know that you yeah. have a particular uh, niche yeah. that you work with. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Tell us more. Yeah. So look, um, you know, I'm, I'm Kiwi, Māori from New Zealand. Yep. Um, been in Australia since um, Boxing Day 1992. There you go. Etched in memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, been in Australia a long time. And, and w- one of the challenges that I saw or, or one of the problems that I saw was, you know, our people come over to Australia, they, they work hard and hard jobs. Yeah. Right, so so the the whole you know work hard and, and create income that wasn't the issue. Yeah, where the breakdown was is they would come here, they would work hard and hard jobs, but they wouldn't transition that income across to the next phase, which is to acquire assets. Their money's not working. They're working for their. They're money. They're working hard for their money. Yeah, right. Yeah. And 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 they, like I said, they work hard and hard jobs. Yeah, and um, and they do very well. They're very respected within their fields, mm. um, but that next next step of taking the money and getting the money to work for them, taking the money and getting the money to actually, you know, shift from just expenditure yeah. into assets. And that there was just a breakdown in thinking there. Yep. But the net result of that is they, they're they not participating in the increase of wealth in the economy. Yeah. They're not part- participating in the increase of wealth across, you know, the the 
people here in Australia. And I looked into other communities and you just see this natural shift. They come here, they work hard, but straight away they move straight into getting their income into assets. Mm. And they do that very, very quickly. Yeah. And I mean, we've had a chat about this, which I feel is some cultures have a natural skew towards property. 100%. Right? And yeah. I mean, we, yeah. I'm, there's no, um, I'm not making, playing the race card on this. I think we culture and cultural investing is a very, very big thing. Because I'll give you an example. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we work close to a lot of clients and families. Italians are very good at this. Mm. Italians will buy, you know, the uncle will buy this block, then the, the family will buy this block, and the kids are buying the one next to them. And suddenly they've, you know, together they've got this, I guess, communal mindset that we can own property together. And I've seen that down the coast and, you know, parts of Sydney. So, so there's I, some I cultures see. that do it very well and there's yeah. some cultures that, that just – become maybe generational renters and that becomes part of their DNA as well, doesn't it? hundred percent, hundred percent. And so I, I see another skew of that. So mm. where I kind of cut my teeth coming into property was um, I, I would find development sites for developers. Right. So I, I learned I learned about feasibilities. I learned about uh, to understand about development sites. Yeah. And I would go out. And so one of my core competencies from my from my background, which is in the corporate sphere, yeah. is I'm pretty good with people. You know, <laughs> people like me. Well, for those that don't, you got—I mean, you got—you got an attractive magnetic personality, right? So yeah, people it don't helps. have a choice but to like you. Yeah, yeah. and and people like Kiwis too. Yeah. You know, there's no walls around yeah. around that. So you know, people are people. People generally view us as from a high trust perspective, mm. and so being able to go in and and, and speak to because when you're finding development sites for developers, off often you're speaking to to mums and dads yeah. that bought properties once upon a time. Mm. And so I, I did a lot of work in around like the Leppington and Austral area, oh, uh, Edmondson Park and those areas. Yeah, man, it's Maria and Giuseppe. They're the owners. Yeah, <laughs> you know they bought the property once upon a time for a couple of dollars, yes. and it's it's a liquid asset. Uh, the, the majority of them are. Uh, and I, think, uh, I mean, traditionally, like the farm, they, they work, it's a farm. They work yeah, land, yeah, yeah, it's farm. So the three to five acre property that yeah. they bought once upon a time on a dime on a dime. Yeah, but it was the end of the world. Mm. And no, no one knew totally. it. Austral, it was like wow, you know, that was like a day trip from the city. Yeah, but they had the foresight. You know, they'll say things like, you know, buy land. They're not making any more. Mm. You know, it's cultural. They're like, put your money into the land. Yeah, um, and then you fast forward, you know, ten, twenty, however many years, the zoning changes, mm -hmm. and the opportunity there, and they're cashing out. You know, seven figures, absolutely healthy seven figures. You know, um, but they believe in property. Yeah. So certain cultures uh, believe in property, and and I think a lot of that is they've they've got everything is about proximity. So if the people around you, the people within your culture, the people within your community, are generating wealth through property, and and, and you've got close proximity to those people, you've got a lot of information that tells you you've got a strong data set that says, hey, no, this property thing works. Mm. Whereas by the same token, if a lot of people within your culture and your community that you integrate with, um, they're all renters. Then, then that's the paradigm that you have of property. Yeah, spot on. You know, so and it's the same goes for people that haven't done well in property because I'll tell everyone that you know investing in property isn't worth it, and yeah. then that kind of permeates through their mindset and going, oh, actually, plants that seed of doubt. Whereas successful investors being able to pass the baton on, going, we've done well in property. Yeah, we've made a couple of mistakes, and they're happy to share those, share maybe those oversights errors that they've made as well. It's. I guess we we want more successful investors. We want more confident investors. We want more, you know, and to take that first step is often the hardest as well. Yeah, but what I also believe is the base level beliefs drive behaviour. So if you already have a foundational belief that you believe in property, yeah, you'll keep at it till it works for you because mm. you already believe it'll it's it's the way out. You know, and that's what I said at the start. It's 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 property becomes the solution in a single generation to shift a family. From, from poverty, and if I can use that word, yeah, yeah. through to wealth in one generation. And all you do is acquire property assets, right? What's the simplest way to do that? You work with people who have already done it. Mm. Right? Be around people. This, your circle, being around the right people who give you the right information, who have your best interests at heart. And, you know, so what, what we have to do working with our demographic is we're shifting a lot of people from being non-property owners to becoming property owners. Yeah, which is a huge shift. Which is a huge shift. Yeah. But what I've noticed is is if this is the line, right, so – and on this side, I don't own property. Yeah. Once you get people into that first property and they're, they're now on this side with their own property, everything becomes possible. Because what you're dealing with on this side of the line is people going, well, is it possible for me? Mm. You know, what about affordability? 
you know, property's out of reach. So they're, they're dealing with a lot of questions that once you own property, they start to evaporate. Isn't it right? Right. Isn't it right? So once they transition. Everything they worried about beforehand. Yes. In, it just, I mean, it's a crossover. I say it's there, people that buy property. I'm like, you wait on the outside, waiting for the market to fall, market to fall. As soon as you buy property, it's like they're calling us going, has this thing gone up yet? And and I'm like, your tune changed very quickly, which is a great, it's a great transition, but yep. it's that crossover. It's almost that immediate line. As soon as you've bought, you're like, now I'm in the market. Now I want this thing to go up. Whereas when you're out of it, it's like waiting, waiting, waiting. And it's just for this fall that just hasn't happened or hasn't happened to the way that they expected it to either. Yeah. And look, for those that are waiting for the market to fall, that that is not the strategy. Spot on. Right. Spot on. The strategy is get into the market, buy property, hold and buy more. Well, I mean, waiting for the market to fall, the outcome of that is lending actually gets harder from, from our perspective because the banks start to tighten up because the market isn't as lucrative, right? So the banks will then start to clamp down. Maybe high LVR loans start to get phased out. Um, less, higher riskier loans then get assessed at a you know, much much higher scrutiny, for example. So, yeah, to me, like when you wait, the unintended consequences that is well the banks start to close up shop just a little bit more as well and so that's the technical aspect mm. but i'll speak to the emotional and psychological aspect yeah so what people say is i'm going to wait for the market to to, to drop yeah right and let, let's say the market actually goes down yeah. what do you think those same people say when the market's going down uh, i might i might go down a little bit more and i'll wait that's possibly. right yeah so those same people uh, that then become fearful mm. right they become fearful and they're like, well, I don't want to buy while it's falling yeah. because if I buy while it's falling, well, it could get lower yeah. and I'll lose money. And then they don't buy it. And then the market moves up. Yep. That's the cycle that I see most often yeah. because it's it's we have a saying that teach me about property. It's not timing the market. It's time in the market. Mm. Capital growth is your friend. Let the market do the heavy lifting. Don't be the guy who believes that he knows to the day the perfect time to buy a property. Yeah. Because no one does. Yeah, and the perfect time was about five or six years ago. Well, and, we say 20 years. <laughs> yeah, so the perfect time was 20 years <laughs> yeah. ago, right? The second best time Today. is now. Yeah, great. Right? So what I've noticed, because I speak to, you know, you and I, we're in the market, we speak to a lot of people. Yeah. And it's psychology. Isn't it? So the That's psychology is- A as, lot of our days spent yeah. actually not, no, not convincing people, but just unpacking those beliefs going- why do you feel that way or why mm. do you think that way and who shaped that belief about mm. buying property? Yeah. Yeah. So people think, well, you know, if, if I buy a property and it's here and the market falls, well, then I lose money. Mm. But here's the reality. You only crystallize any loss when you liquidate the asset. Yes. Yep. True? Yeah. So if you buy a property at this point and then the market falls to here, yeah. what I always say is, yeah, but over the long term, it's going to go to here. Yeah, great. Right? So you only lose money if you if you liquidate an asset, if you've bought high and you sell low. Yeah. Now that is a recipe to lose money. But if you buy and hold and buy some more, that's how you build wealth. Yeah. Right. Wealth is measured in assets. It's measured in your holdings. Right now, I'm a transactional guy, so I'll do a lot of transactional strategies as well, just to build cash flow. Yeah, okay. You know, so in and out on deals, put on call options, and, and those types of things. Yeah, and I'll generate you know revenue. So, that, like I said, going back to what I said before, I, I started by finding development sites for for developers, and then I realised eventually you do enough of those, and you're like, well, why don't I start doing? Yeah, this? yeah. right. I'm, and feed, I'm feeding yeah, others. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, well, I figured it out, and these guys, and and then you start meeting people, mm. and you're like, these people aren't smarter than me. You know, these people aren't geniuses. They just got uh, balls, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's, it's, it's not intellect. Yeah. It's not even financial resources because in a market like Australia, in a market like Sydney, money flows to the right property deal. And it's banks will lend on property oh, yeah. every All day, day of the All week. Day. Especially right. if it's a deal that stacks. Yes. And then you start, to get, you start to get exposure to this. Yeah. And by being around these people, you're like, man, yeah, the thing that they've got is they've got balls and they're willing to do stuff. Yeah. And someone took a risk somewhere to get to where they are today. Right. Yeah. So when's your day for you to take your risk, right? And so the, the, the biggest risk with property is you take no action and you don't get in and the market moves anyway. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we try to communicate to all the families in our program. The market's going to go up mm. with or without you. Yeah, spot on. The spot population, on. the growth, you know, we live in Australia. It's an amazing country. Oh, we have yeah. freedom. It's done phenomenally well through COVID. It's a free market. People can come here and they can change their lives in this country very quickly and earn Correct. extremely good money. And that that's a place that attracts other people. Yeah. And so the population is going to continue to grow up. Wages. 
you're in good money here. Absolutely. Even compared to New Zealand. The money in New Zealand is terrible, you know, so you, you come here. Money in New Zealand is terrible and property prices are out of control. Man, like, that is a perfect started. storm. Man. <laughs> New Zealand is a completely different beast altogether. Different beast. Yeah. But, but the opportunities here is for everyone to understand that you'll never make money off the deal you don't do. Mm. And you don't even get the education from the process. That's yeah, powerful. You know, so most of my responsibility is encouraging families to take more action. Yeah. Because in my experience, most people underestimate the strength of their current financial position. Tell us more because I know you've, you've, I've heard you say that a few yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Tell us more about that. So families just don't realise, you know, and, and, and I'll give you the context. Everyone knows someone else who earns more money than them. Mm. Right? Yeah. Right? So if you want to build this world view of, oh, yeah, my, our pays aren't very good. And uh, so what happens is if and when, you know, uh, or when and then, yep. you know, when I get my next pay rise, then I'll. When we do this, then I'll. Yeah. Right? And, and, and that extinguishes present responsibility. That's what it does. So what we want families to understand is with your incomes right now and your current financial position, you can be doing so much more. And that's what we unlock. And we show them. You're the finance guy. You know. Mm. Most deals you can get set. Absolutely. With a bit of creativity, with with with, with looking through different lenses. Oh, mate. I mean, there's black and white, and then there's some shades of grey when it comes to a deal. And you know, yeah. everyone says buying property is a game of finance. With some houses thrown solution. in the middle. Correct. Give them a solution. It's like, oh, I'm not sure, mate. You're looking for a reason to not do the deal. Mike. here's all the reasons to do the deal. Yep. But you just, uh, there's, that, I guess, that chasm between making a decision and now actually taking the plunge as well. Yeah, so the families in our program, we say, you choose the what and we'll show you the how, mm. right? And it, as, as long as they've got the desire to, to, to move forward, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to overcome some of your, your, your present thinking. Your present thinking creates your present reality. Mm. So you've got to shift your present thinking. And that's why you have the right team around you. That's why you have Atelier Wealth. That's why you have these people that just see things differently. Yeah. And so the courage is, well, how do you leave behind your present thing and to create the lifestyle and the life that you've always wanted? Yeah. Right? And you've got to take that step. In my experience, we've, you know, we've got over 1,300 families in our property it's education incredible. program. It's incredible. You know? And you mentioned education there. So, I mean, that becomes, I guess, the foundation for a lot of people coming into TMAP. Is that, is that yeah. kind of the gateway for a lot of people? Yeah, because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And, 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 and the hardest thing is everyone makes decisions from their current level of knowledge. Right. So how do you amplify the decision making? How do you get people into a better position to make better decisions? You improve their thinking. Mm. You improve their knowledge base. Right? We all know those people. They go to all the seminars. They go to absolutely everything and they take no action. Yes. Right? We've all met them. We've all dealt with them. And, and I mean, they're the same faces you see at all the other yeah. conferences, PD days, <laughs> and like that. But this is the same content we've been through. Um, and I guess it projects because if you're not changing, I mean, you and I, if we're not changing our own personal professional development, mm. we're proje not projecting that onto our clients. So yeah. we're not giving them the confidence to move forward because we're not actually moving forward ourselves. Yeah, 100%. But here's the thing you can only learn so much from a book. Mm. Then you, the rest of the learning. It's from the action that you take because you, you can't create the course of a stationary object. Yeah, yeah. And there's only so much that's ever going to be in the brochure. And then the rest you learn as you're doing the deals. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and what, what you're also going to learn about is going to learn about you and how you react emotionally in a million-dollar deal. Mm. And you're never going to know that till you start doing million-dollar deals. You're never going to know how you react and, and, and the waves of emotion where you're like, yes, this is definitely the best thing. I'm so happy with this. <laughs> oh, my gosh, have I made the right mistake? Oh, I've read this. I saw this article. And then you come back up the other side and, 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 and learning about who you are and how you act and respond through the deal process. So, yes, we believe in education, but the highest form of education is to take action and implement, implement, implement. Yeah, nice. And so as you implement strategies, as you implement knowledge um, to, to move, you know, your family forward, then as, as that happens, you're going to learn so much more. And then even the stuff that you've read, you know, yep. all of a sudden you go back and review because you're in it yeah. and it matters because settlement is next Friday and you need to do these things, <laughs> right? All of a sudden all, you become highly receptive to all of the information. You become highly receptive to the guidance. And the only thing I would say, it is mission critical to your success, to everyone who's listening, to have the right people around you. Yes, isn't it? You know, giving you the, the, the best and worst scenarios 
but charting the course to how to navigate you from where you are to where you want to be. That is the most important thing. And guys, stop taking advice or stop getting directions from people who've never been Hmm. to where it is that you want to get to. Right, and the challenge is, what happens when that 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 advice is coming from the people that we love the most? Yeah. What happens when it comes from a place of love and care? And people are trying to protect you. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. That's when it's most challenging and confronting. Right. They're trying to protect. I mean, you. that's super close to home. So I guess when yeah. family's saying, "Is that the right decisions?" So they can get in your head a little bit, and they come from. A well, their doubt, authority. their fear. Yeah. Their doubt and their fears are going to project onto you. Yeah. Right. And so it can come from a place of love. Yeah. And 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 so. It takes courage, right? This ain't for the weak. Mm. If you're going to be the first in your family to arrive at the top of the mountain, that's the language we use at Teach Me About Property, if you're going to be the first in your family to arrive at the top of the mountain, that journey ain't for the weak. Mm. It's uphill and it's a grind, right? And you're going to have to leave behind some of the some of the influence of the people who you care about the most because they've never been there. Yeah. So you've got to surround yourself with people who are already at the top of the mountain. And they're just telling you what the view looks like. Yeah, nice. Right? And they're sharing that with you. And when you talk about people taking that plunge, I mean, often that means younger, newer investors, right? I know you've worked predominantly, yeah, you've had a good history of working with newer investors, which means you've kind of got so seasoned at going, I can understand the fears, I can understand the objections, I can understand the, yeah, the trials, tribulations, and, and the lack of support. So take us through that journey for, you know, someone's listening, they're a newer investor and they're going, mm. Oh, I feel so lonely. Uh, this is a new journey, for example. Yeah. You know, everyone that bought property started there. They all started with their first. Yeah. Uh, and now they've come out and it's what sometimes I call, you know, you and I call the accidental investor where they yeah. started out. Now they've stumbled into like a growth asset and things have gone really well. And, going, and the market's right. gone up 23% <laughs> in the last 12 <laughs> yeah. months. And, you know, you put down your deposit plus the 23%, you got, yeah. you got genuine equity in that asset. Yeah. And so a, a lot of these people that we work with, the families that we work with, you know, their, their original aspiration is not to become millionaires. Mm. They just want a family home. Yeah. But you know, there's always positive unintended consequences. Yes, nice. Yeah. Right? So the positive unintended consequences of buying property in Australia is that asset tends to, over time, go up in value. Mm. And then you look and, and, oh, it's gone up a lot. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Wow. Sometimes it can move very quickly. So, you know, we had families that had settled on properties in, you know, October 20, October 2020. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. So you're in COVID. They're, they're, oh, they're the settling on the properties. Down, yeah. yeah. And everyone's wondering what's going to happen with the market. And then, boom. Hmm. And when I say boom, I mean capital B, boom. Yeah. And so we, we, we talk about, you know, a number of strategies. So we talk about the team app two step. So for some families, they've just got to get into the market. Yeah. And so what we talk about is buy what you can afford now to get what you really want later. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So for some people, they're like, well, I don't want to just buy anything. I, I want the dream house. Yes. That's like, Oof. yeah. And I, I am in similar conversations. I want, I want that house. And like, there's two things that are holding you back. One is borrowing capacity into its deposit. Right. So, well, yeah, what you call the two step is what we call a stepping stone property or a stretch property. I'm like, <laughs> you can stretch yourself and try and get to that and you're going to be left with not much at the end. Mm. That's cool. Or you can have a stepping stone property, which is we know you're not going to be in this forever. Yeah. It's a means to then get to the next, to the, the ideal family home, right? To everyone going through that yeah. right now, because definitely there's going to be people listening that, that are going through that process. Yeah. Guys, be humble. Yeah, nice. I right, started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> yeah. Right, you don't start at the top of the mountain, you start at the bottom and you climb and it's uphill. Yeah. But here's the thing. Nobody gets to the top of the mountain in one step. Mm. That just ain't how it works. This ain't lotto. We're talking about real. You put in the work, you get the outcome. Right? There ain't nothing wrong with buying what you can afford now to get what you really want later. And you'll be astonished at how quickly that first step sets you up for property number two, mm. right? So that's the first group that we've got to address Yeah, because there's so many people, they're like, well, no, I want, I want a five-bedroom double-story house because I've got a big family. <laughs> that's like, oh, well, that's only 1.9 mil. <laughs> yeah. you know, and your borrowing capacity is 800,000, <laughs> so you only need – and this is the thing. I, I'm not here to extinguish dreams. Mm. Like if you're up for the journey, let's get it. But what I'm telling you is you now need to save $1.1 million to buy that property. And How long? And unfortunately, when you go to save that, un, what's that property not going to be worth in two years' time? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But sometimes you know, um, and Aaron's we laugh about it in jest. It's not. I, I, we're not 
We're not laughing at you. Yeah, great. We're laughing with the reality that we experience this every day. Yeah. And if you're up for that climb, man, that is a that is a Mount Everest goal. Our goal is your goal. Like, yeah. If you want to get there, man, we'll, we'll take you. We'll take, we'll take you, you there. there. But it's not it's not going to happen with this one pull of the trigger right now. Yeah. Well, what if what if there's a better way? Mm. Would you be receptive to executing the strategy that could get you there faster? Was more certain and enabled you to benefit from a property market that tends to go up in value over mm. time. Like, why don't you get the market working for you instead of against you? Because trust me, when you're sitting on the sidelines and you read a newspaper article about how the market just went up in value, yeah. man, a little tear comes down your, <laughs> your cheek because you're not benefiting from that growth. Yeah. But once you get that first asset, like we said, once you get that first asset, when you read about the market going up, yes. you're like, Man, I got in. Amen. I got in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and whether it's a unit, whether it's a house, a townhouse, in is in, guys. Buy what you can afford now to get what you really want later. Use the stepping stone property strategy that Atelier Wealth have. Why? Because it works. I like yours better. I like the two step. <laughs> you like mine better? Yeah. yeah, the team out two step, right? You buy what you can afford now to get what you really want later. Yeah, nice. Right? And, and, and that's just me and Aaron being real with you guys. Right? We didn't start with the dream homes. That ain't how this works. Right. You, you, I think you want to be embarrassed about the first property you oh, bought. Yeah. And I am <laughs> so embarrassed about the property that I first Yeah, me, the hood, man. The hood came good. <laughs> you know, I had the apple crumble on the ceiling is what I had. <laughs> yeah. and, but, but we talk about the analogy is it's just like a, your first car. Mm. Oh, exactly. So first embarrassed car. about the I mean, but yeah. the first car was freedom. Like It wasn't the make or model. Mm. It was putting the P plates on like, it's yours. I get to drive my mates around it's like yours. this is freedom. Yeah. You own it. It's your car. Yeah. And so if 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 your dream car is a Ferrari and you're not going to buy any cars until you can buy a Ferrari, guess who's never going to own a car? Mm. It's the same with property. If your dream house is on a certain street in a certain suburb and it's amazing and, and you have to have that as a first property, the probability of that is so low, guys. And I'm not the guy that says that you can't. I'm just here to say there's a better way, right? Mm. Use the best strategies from the best minds. And, and we're just telling you to do what we did. That's all. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and we combat this. We encounter this conversation so often. So being humble, having realistic expectations. But if you start there, you can get to the top of the mountain mm. all day. The, the families and the people that are most difficult to work with is it's 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 not borrowing capacity. It's none of that. It's unrealistic expectations. Yeah, nice. That is what you're combating. No, no, we have to have this. It's like cool. Well, this is what's required. Well, I don't want to put in that effort. Yeah. You know, and we have a saying. You know, we, we can't do sit ups and you get a six pack. That ain't how this works. Yeah. That ain't how this works. You know, we teach you the strategies. We hold your hand through the process, but you down there grinding. But you will get the six pack. That's the guarantee. Mm. Yeah. And so the second one is the families that that have taken the step. Yeah. They, they got into their first property and now they've got this thing called equity. <laughs> and they're like, they've read about it. They've heard about it. They've seen it on the news. Their, their mates talk talk about it, but they still have no idea what it yeah. is. Honest? Absolutely. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, I'm mean, trying to explain to yeah. them like what equity is and the <laughs> ties just <laughs> glaze over. Glaze over. Yeah. So I want you to understand equity from an extremely simple position. Right, equity is just an enabler. It enables you to be able to accomplish the next steps. Yeah. Right. So we talk about growing the gap. So if we, you know, equity is the gap. Yeah. The gap between what you owe the bank or, or the value of your property and what you owe the bank. Nice. Yeah. That's all equity is. Yeah. Right. It teach me about property. We're all about simplifying things. The gap between what your property is worth and what you owe the bank. And the goal is to grow the gap. Yeah. Yeah. Grow the gap. So there's two things you can do to grow the gap. One is pay down your mortgage faster. That's one option. The other one is capital growth. Or you can implement both at the same time. Yeah. The goal is to just grow the gap. If you grow the gap and you have more equity, you can take that equity and use it to fund your next asset purchase. And how do you do that? Pick up the phone. You have a chat with the Tilly Wealth. Aaron. Let's have a chat. I, heard, I watched the episode. I think I got some equity. You know, I was speaking to my neighbor down at the shop and they sold their house for XX and we only bought ours for this. Yeah. That equals equity, guys. You do not need to know the answers. That's not your responsibility. All you need to know is what you want, your hopes, dreams, and ambitions, 
and then who to call mm-hmm. to get the answers. Aaron, help me. How do I use this equity stuff to buy my next property? And Aaron would be like, Let's rock and roll. Thanks for the call. <laughs> You've come to the right place, right? So this is what I, what I try to teach all of our students that teach me about property. You just got to know the questions to ask. Yeah. Right? And the question you should always be asking is not can I, it's how can I? Hmm. How can I? Regardless of what it is that you want to do in your life, right? Because can I is, is, is binary, yes or no, mm. right? How can I? Let's just find a way. And so that's, you know, that's kind of like the secret sauce at TMAP. Man, we just find a way. And I'm sure to tell your wealth, you know, people are going to come to you and oh, other people have said we can't. And you're like, man, we're in the business of can. That's, and that's, I mean, that's probably where a lot of our time is being spent. I mean, respect of yours and ours. Someone said no to them. And now we're putting out fires to kind of rewind that to go, actually, that wasn't a no. It wasn't, they just didn't know how to do it or there's another way to do it. And again, it goes back to your point that it was a binary question. Like, yeah. actually, it's not. There's gray areas in here, so you can plan those gray areas as well. And look, some professionals are just looking for simplicity, mm. right? So sometimes the people that you go to, they just look at you as the investor. It's just been too much hard work. Yeah. And they're not up for the grind. Yeah. Right? And so what they're telling you is you, you don't fit their small box of the ideal customer. Yeah. They're telling you that, oh, you, you, you're not a vanilla deal. Yeah. And because of that, sorry, I can't help you but they deliver it in a way where they're going to tell you you're the problem, right? And and at, I'm, I'm sure at Atelier Wealth, much like teaching me about property, and we work with everyone from no matter where yeah. you are right now, we will change your life, Yeah. right? No matter what your situation is, we change your life through creating new financial thinking and new financial behaviours that create new financial outcomes. Yeah. And we are the home. Man, this is, we believe every family in Australia can own property. We believe there's room at the top of the mountain for everyone. Nice. Right. We don't operate from a from a scarcity mentality. Yeah. We're like, man, there's room up here for everyone. And not just that, man, we'll show you how. Mm. We'll show you the how. We'll hold your hand along the way and we'll overcome a lot of that thinking. And I get it. You go to work and there's a mate at work and he's just a dark cloud and he's going to be negative. He's always been negative. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't want what he's got. Right? You don't want what he's got. And part of him doesn't want you to get what you want either. And this is about being in the right circle. The right circle is when you win they clap yeah nice they cheer for you they celebrate your success there's no envy there's no resentment because your success highlights the lack of their success in their own life and that's the biggest challenge with breaking generational curses if you're surrounded by a community where they've got all these generation generational curses and they can't progress then they're like well who do you think you are Hmm. (laughs) who do you think you are and who are you you're going to be the first. You're going to be that number one person that breaks all and of that. Gotta, and you come forward. out of the herd a little bit and being yeah. out of the herd is lonely and isolating and, uh, yeah, you, you come out of your comfort zone. It ain't for the weak. Yeah. It ain't for the weak. And so what you do is you find a new circle. Mm. You find a circle of people's. So when you walk into that circle and you tell them your hopes and dreams, their eyes light up and they're like, man, you can do it. Yeah. Not just that. I've already done that, and here's what I think you should do. Mm. Have you spoken to your mentor? How are they helping with this? Have you spoken to Atelier Wealth? Man, they've got these solutions to overcome those challenges. You move into an environment where it's no longer about what's going to hold you back and they're nothing but possibilities. Yeah. Mind blown. I'm going to have to get you back. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to be chatting a, a lot more um, because, yeah, a lot of people think that investing in property is the numbers side and it can be very uh, rational what you and I and certainly you live and breathe this is it's all emotional. Oh, right? yeah. so it's a game played between the ears and in, mm. and in your head a little bit. And it's like we've got to come out of that. Like you say, the word enabler is something that's super, super powerful. How do we enable you? Yep, partly through education. Education will only get you so far. Action. You then got to yep, take the action and execute as well. So Massey Archibald, mate, thank you very <laughs> much. It's uh, Yeah, I don't even know how long we've had a chat for. I reckon we could chat for hours uh, and we do, yeah, mate, we because – um, because it comes from it, and every time I've had a chat to you, um, you lift like exactly that. You lift people up. That you go, hey man, I, I can do this, um, and you give people that sense of confidence as well. And uh, for that, I want to say thank you very much. Because anyone that's listened to this will walk away going, I feel uplifted by that conversation. Mm. Not going, I feel a little bit dejected mm. by that conversation. That's out of reach. It is in your reach. It just depends on what you want to do and how you want to take that action as well. Yeah, all day. 
Mate, thanks very much. Yeah, awesome. Love it. Thanks uh, for having us on. Um, from everyone at Teach Me About Property, we love what you do at Atelier Well. Nah, mate, respect guys, is mutual. They're the right guys, man. If you, you need nah, loans mate. or you got to get your um, your stuff moving in terms of your property portfolio, man, pick up the phone, give them a call. Let's nah, get mate, it. respect is it's certainly mutual. And that's the thing about this. It's like we want to wish, we want our property spheres to get better, We're elevated, everyone playing a bigger, better game because mm-hmm. the ultimate winners effectively are Australian families that then get to change their family's wealth position through investing in property and doing it very, very well. So, mate, thank you very much. We'll include your details for Team Map below if you do want to get in touch with Matt and his wonderful team. Um, feel free to. Uh, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure for you to join us on another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. And until next time, take care.